This is the 2022 Volvo XC60, the B5 Momentum trim. We're gonna talk about what's new, we're gonna talk about the exterior, the drive interior features, and we're gonna finish off with the conclusions. So let's get started here. Volvo is a car company I actually really like. I think it's a fresh breath of air in the kind of European car space, right? compared to the typical German, Audi, BMW, Mercedes stuff. I think Volvo has something unique to offer and obviously one of the safest cars on this planet, right? It's got five stars down the board for crash test safety. Most importantly, that driver's side overlap test, these things, they always nail it. It's only the rollover test where I got like a four star on, which whatever. Let's get this out on the road, see what it can do. All right, let's just calm down there because that's not really what you're going to be doing in this. In fact, it's not even satisfying to do that, uh, driving the piss out of it. That's not really where you find the satisfaction in, in driving an XC60. But like I was saying, super safe. It always does a great job in directing the crash energy away from the occupants inside the cabin. Really brilliant. And that right there might be a huge reason as to why you might want to consider this for your family. But moving on, they made some tweaks to the exterior, like the grill, the front bumper, things like that with the lights. And it looks great. It's a sharp looking ride. All the Volvos look great. We have a new Google infotainment system, which I will most certainly talk about in the interior segment. And you have some new wheel options and they have updated some of the sensors and the cameras for the, for the safety tech. So those are your main changes. And comment below what you think on the looks of this XC60. Is this the model that you would personally get? Well, I guess if you're watching a review on this, you're probably going to get one uh, <laughs> or you're thinking about it. But also keep in mind the XC90, the flagship SUV, can be had for a couple grand more than this. And also we're going to be talking about the recharge models because that's kind of where Volvo is putting most of their focus. They don't really seem to be caring about these internal combustion models. Uh, I mean, admittedly, this does have a 48 volt mild hybrid system, but they're really prioritizing their plug-in hybrid models. So you can see that when you go on their website, these ICE cars, these internal combustion engine vehicles, they're listed as other vehicles. <laughs> so that's something funny to note there. Anyway, let's move on into this driving segment now. As I mentioned, you know, Driving it hot-blooded is not where you're going to get the satisfaction. Just chilling in it is really where you're going to find tranquility in this because I'm only doing this for testing purposes. And after testing it, you know, I found the chassis to be great. It's got a great handling characteristic to it, uh, even though that's not what it's made for. When you're kind of taking around these corners, you can tell the body control is really well sorted in this. And the engine here is the 2-liter turbocharged uh, four cylinder they only offer a four cylinder no matter how high up in the in the trim level you go you can get like a t8 with the <laughs> supercharged turbocharged and hybrid engine you know you can get everything right but it's still going to be a four cylinder but in this application the one that most people are going to be buying this b5 uh, it's going to be producing about 248 horsepower and about 258 pounds feet of torque something like that and it's the type of engine where it will die out on the, on the top end. It loses steam when you're out on the highway, when you're doing like 60 or 70 miles an hour and you peg it, it doesn't really offer much more. That's what I'm saying. You just kind of ease into a certain speed and then you just maintain that speed. And that's where this vehicle is at its happiest. And I enjoy this chill nature that this Volvo exhibits. However, I will say there are some issues with it and that's primarily with the suspension. The body control is great, but the suspension has issues and it's not even that this vehicle rides too firm or it's too wallowy. It's not even that. It's just, it's got this issue where it's really hard to fix. And the best way I can explain it is when you go over certain bumps, the vehicle will kind of jostle you about. Like when you're over an uneven road, which is very possible, especially at slower speeds when you're at like a parking lot or something. I mean, it can happen anywhere, but just as an example, when you have like these kind of uneven terrains, this vehicle, it really kind of moves you about and that can be really annoying for occupants and you as a driver as well. And that's the worst part because otherwise the ride quality itself is great over the smaller bumps, over the larger bumps. It actually absorbs that very well, even with these optional 20 inch wheels, which 
Standard, it comes with 18 inch wheels, and I would personally recommend getting the 19 inch wheels. I think that's a good balance between looks and price and I guess ride quality. Um, but here's the thing though, getting smaller wheels on this isn't really gonna help it all too much, not with this problem anyway. If you got the smaller wheels, it would help to isolate out the smaller bumps, but this vehicle is doing a great job of that already with the 20s. That's what I'm saying. And the suspension architecture is all there. You know, it's got double wishbone front suspension with the multi-link in the rear. Good stuff. Otherwise, all was good here. The seats are super comfortable, which I'll talk more about in the interior segment. But there are so many things here to make this a non-fatiguing experience. But that particular tuning kind of went and ruined it. Uh, other things to note, it is a little bit more noisy in here when you get up to the highway speeds. But it's not terrible. It's a pretty natural wind buffeting effect. You know, I can even live with that. That's not even a big deal. It's not an obnoxious noise. Uh, it's just natural wind buffeting. But as it sits here, I think vehicles like the BMW X3 would be probably a superior buying option to this because the BMW, especially the new ones, are very safe vehicles. Uh, that's not really an issue. You can also have things like the Audi Q5, right? And here's the thing with the BMW, especially the new ones, they've really nailed the feel because it's got a good chassis i don't need cars to ride like a cloud there's a certain balance between stiffness and compliance and bmw is starting to nail that now before they used to screw it up all the time but now they're starting to nail it they're taking advantage of that excellent chassis it's doing a great job of absorbing the bumps while giving you good high speed stability it rides good but it doesn't it doesn't feel all floaty right i really like vehicles i can pull off that particular feel if you know what i mean Everything else is really natural, like the, the steering. The brakes, I will say, they're on the touchy side, and <laughs> you have to get in on the brakes still because it just kind of gives you that sensation that you have a lot of braking power, but you still have to get in on them to get all the stopping power. That's just something I noticed, so it's kind of that's something you have to get used to, but everything else, you know, I like the demeanor of it, as I already mentioned. And handling is decent for all intents and purposes. No, it's not maybe as good as, like, the X3, nor do I really care. And I will say this auto stop start in this is excellent. That mild hybrid system is really doing an excellent job in providing really smooth and immediate uh, stops and starts. So I would actually leave that turned on. This vehicle does about 22 in the city and 28 on the highway. That's pretty accurate. Uh, that's about what I'm getting for the city and the highway MPGs, mind you. And we'll end off with this, with the price. This one, the way it's spec'd here, it's about $54,000. I spec'd one online, it was about $52,000. Uh, 51 to 52 grand you know i would get the slightly cheaper wheels i would avoid the protection package i would get this convenience package and whatever the other one is that climate control package i would get that for 750 dollars i would get both of those things so the way i would spec it yeah it's about 51 52. Uh, this paint job is gorgeous this, but this is an optional metallic paint job it's an exclusive paint job at 695 dollars it's gorgeous i love it but i would probably avoid it because i don't want to drive around a super expensive Volvo product. I just don't think that's really worth it because once you start creeping up into the 70K or even the 65K price tags, you can either get an XC90, but you can also, especially for the 70K price, you can get like Porsche Macans and things like that. So that's what I would personally go with. But the other thing is, as I mentioned before, it's their plug-in hybrids that they're really trying to sell you on. And those plug-in hybrids, like an XC60, uh, plug-in hybrid will do about 19 miles on electric only range which seems like nothing but whatever it's that's pretty good that's pretty convenient if you're doing short commutes to to and from work and when i spec one out it was about 60 grand so about an eight thousand dollar delta over this and that's a lot of money honestly you know if you can get a discount on something like that that'd be great along along with uh, if there's any of that seventy five hundred dollar tax credits available that would also help out a ton but talk to your dealership about that and also, I spec'd out a regular XC90, a T6, mind you, and that was about 65 grand. So, if you're gonna be spending 60 grand on a regular XC60, I would just go into debt a little bit more <laughs> and get the flagship XC90 in the T6 model, right? If you're looking at the gasoline powered versions, uh, I'm sure if you got the recharge edition the plug-in hybrid xc90 would be well over 70 grand so something to keep in mind but let's go ahead and let's transition over into the interior segment now
Okay, so now that we are stopped, let's go ahead and let's talk about this interior on the 2022 XC60. As you can see here, it's a very minimalistic cabin space, and I really enjoy that. I like the way Volvo designs their interiors. It's really something special to behold, especially in this class. Uh, it's really only taught by like Mercedes. You know, I think Mercedes does a pretty good job. However, uh, the thing is with like a GLC Benz or something like that, uh, the kind of C-class Benzes, they all have a chintzier interior space. You really have to get like an S-class if you want a solid Benz, right? And that's like over a hundred thousand dollar proposition right there, hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So who cares about that? This one, the interior is solid. Although I will say, when you go over some smaller jittery bumps, the interior door panels might start to rattle a little bit, but that's about it. Other than that, everything else is really solid in here. The optional Harman Kardon sound system, which is about eight or nine hundred dollars, worth getting. It's got plenty of bass, plenty of clarity. Anyway, we have the white leather seats here, and these are the leather seats. We also have a new interior option known as the kind of white cloth interior <laughs> it's very unique and it's a free option i think this is like a little over a thousand dollars to get this leather it is nice leather seats however uh, i would get those free kind of cloth checkered seats i thought that was pretty cool plus it's free and uh, it can help to lower the cost of buying into this but yeah they're super comfortable very non-fatiguing plenty of uh, lumbar support the correct amount uh, not too much not too little and it's uh, you can do plenty of miles sitting in this and i think white just makes a pop in here along with this dual colored steering wheel which is a great thing to grip onto with the white and the black it looks amazing as well no use of double pane glass but that could have helped to quiet this vehicle down further especially at those higher speeds again not a big deal just something to note and these are one-touch automatic windows for all four windows. You have two-way memory seats. Doors feel great when you open and close them. That's another quality feel of this. Automatic headlights. The gear shifter in this, kind of weird and unnecessary. You always have to press down twice and press up twice to either go into reverse or into drive because uh, when you just press it down once, it goes into neutral. So you have to press it down again to go into drive. And the same thing to go into reverse. You have to press it twice uh, or else it just goes into neutral if you press it once up very stupid but it is what it is another thing that's strange is there's no like off button because of the uh, auto stop start feature the way they have it set up is when you press the p button to park it and you press the uh, electronic parking brake the vehicle is just off and all you have to do is open the door and get out okay you don't have to press off on the <laughs> stop start button or anything like that there's a lot of weird quirky things like that it's not a very <laughs> I don't know, there's just some getting used to with this, that's all. Another thing to get used to is this 9-inch all-new Google infotainment system, okay? It's kind of a vertical setup. I don't really mind the vertical setup as much, but the thing is, everything is baked into the into the touchscreen. Uh, it's been that way in the previous generation, the Census infotainment that Volvo was using before, but now with this Google setup, they try to simplify it, I guess, because everybody has a Google account. So everything is just kind of connected here with the Google voice assistant and all that nonsense. Uh, it's all kind of baked in here. But the other thing is all the climate control is in there as well. And it is so distracting to use this while you are driving. You always have to take your eyes off the road to look at this and make sure you're hitting the right buttons. Very annoying. Vehicles should always have their own separated buttons and switches for the climate control but i get why they're doing this because we're headed towards this future of driverless cars i mean you see the way normal humans drive now right with all the cell phones and things in their hands uh what are they doing they're always texting they're always distracted anyway it's deemed that humans suck at driving now right that's just what they're gonna say and then they're gonna make all the cars driverless and now you have plenty of time to screw around these touch screens right or the metaverse or whatever they're going to implement into these vehicles and into our lives moving forward. Uh, that rant aside, we also have the air quality air purification system that's new for 2022. Filters out 95% of the particulates. More and more cars are adding things like that for 2022 and up because cleanliness is uh, what we're trying to strive for moving forward, right? We're trying to make a cleaner society and the cars are trying to do the same thing. It's nice. It's a good thing to have, but cars should have always had this, you know, from day one, honestly, <laughs> ever since they came out with these modern aircon systems. Also, this screen glitched up on me once. I was trying to access the Bluetooth audio system and uh, my phone wasn't pairing correctly. So I went into that Bluetooth menu and then the whole thing just froze up on me. 
and uh, later it fixed itself in a couple of seconds, but still very annoying. That's the problem, burying the heated seat controls, heated steering wheel controls, climate, and all those things that you actually need to use. Um, when it's all buried in there and glitches up, very annoying. The gauge cluster is totally digital and it's very legible, easy to access, easy to understand. That's not really an issue. And um, you just kind of have to press around to access your navigation screen because it can show up a navigation screen on the gauge cluster or it can show up your, your trip controls as well. And again, it's all, all the navigation things are all provided by Google, right? We have a panoramic sunroof in here. We have some cubby spaces, right? Center armrest has some decent space with some USB-C ports, cup holders, bit on the smaller side, and you have a place to store your phone, but I don't think it's a wireless charger. Many 2022 luxury cars are not offering a wireless charging pad. Uh, it just kind of has it, but it doesn't do anything. You do have a volume knob, which is physical, and you also have your uh, your window defrosters. That's physical, right? <laughs> uh, so they do understand that physical buttons are important because they gave you the important ones here, but uh, the rest of them are all kind of baked into the screen. And of course, that means less buttons and switches for them to produce, meaning more profit for them. Adds up when you're selling hundreds of thousands of vehicles. The glove box has plenty of space. I like this bezel-less mirror. That's a great thing. And the overall driving position in this is just excellent. Uh, that alone gives you a plenty of driving confidence right there. And and I'm five foot eleven. Getting in and out is easy. I have plenty of headroom here, so I can put the seat down even further. And uh, taller individuals should be able to fit. The rear seat is about the same as like a BMW X3 or an Audi Q5. Not super plentiful, but it's good enough. Again, I fit behind myself. I'm five foot eleven and you have heated seats in the back and you can fold down those seats as well and you will have plenty of space in here. This is identical in size to like a BMW X3. The, uh, the trunk size is about the same. There is a spare tire underneath, which is great. And with the seats folded, you can haul just about everything that you need to. And yes, it is comfortable to sit back there as well. It's about the same as the front seats. So that's a look at the 2022 XC60. It's a vehicle that I want to like more but I just couldn't because of the stupid infotainment system. I mean, that's the issue with just about every Volvo vehicle. They've been doing this for a long time, baking in all the controls into this into the screen to achieve this minimalistic design. So I think most Volvo owners probably got used to this by now, so maybe it's not as big of a deal to you. Uh, but the other thing is the suspension really kind of deterred me from this car. I, I hate that stupid feel that you get that jostling sensation when you kind of go over some of those imperfect terrains but that aside i did enjoy driving this i enjoyed this kind of uh low blood pressure driving that this thing offers and i think it's great but definitely check out an xc90 i personally have never driven an xc90 so i don't know for sure but i'm assuming that's going to be an excellent experience another car that i did check out with was the xc40 that i really enjoyed i really like the little xc40 suv that one even though it was a little bit firmer than this it didn't kind of move you about in the seat and it also had a better handling demeanor than this and i thought that the turbocharged engine in that had a little bit more character because it kind of had that turbo spooling sounds and things like that this one has it but it's very light in the xc40 it's more so but as it sits here, I mean, X3, Q5, that seems to be kind of my go-to in the boring European car SUV segment. Um, they're kind of doing a pretty good job there. I don't really have much complaints other than the lack of soul. But really, me personally, I like vehicles like the Lexus RX350 and the new Acura MDX. I think those are probably better uses of your money. But I get it people in this segment they if they are set on a european vehicle that's just what they're going to go for but trust me check out the japanese stuff they have character they have interesting high quality interior spaces their technology is a little bit better uh in the way that it's implemented in my opinion and they drive fantastic as well motors have character in them so that's kind of my preference but hopefully you found value with this review thanks again for watching take care and goodbye